Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Catalyst Energies. My name is Dee. Thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful that you're here. This is the Daily Medicine Transmission for July 29th, 2021. It's Thursday here on planet Earth. Welcome back. Welcome if you're new to the channel. Um, if you find this content helpful and inspiring, um, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing this video. It actually does support independent content of creators like myself. Ooh, boy. So I'll get that spiel out of the way. So the dissolution of density, we're going to talk about that today. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be starting... Um, I was thinking about this anyway, and then I saw it pop up on other people's feeds or or content or whatever, however you want to, wherever you find people, your teachers, your influencers, wherever you find them, of doing a, um, I don't like to call it a challenge, but more like a uh, commitment, um, and starting with the third quarter moon, which is on Saturday, up until the next full moon, right? So the Lion's Gate is the new moon on the 8th of August, so 8-8, eight, eight, and then the next full moon, which is in Aquarius, that is going to be um, in the same position as Jupiter and Mars are today in their opposition. So we're going to talk about that. Of course, we're going to talk about that because Jupiter and Mars oppositions are actually incredibly powerful. Um, the tension between the, the warrior energy and the leadership energy is actually something that creates an incredible amount of potential energy to work with. Um, and this is something that we can utilize for the dissolution of density. We're certainly being, um, it, it's certainly being supported right now with um, the, the Schumann resonance. I've, I've been having conversations on the side with people about this for the last day or so. The Schumann resonance and um, the solar energy even and, and the movement of the solar system through our galaxy. There's so many changes happening and it's really about harnessing that um, cyclical energy to move through this process. So one of the things I'm going to be doing as a commitment up until the next full moon is that starting with the third quarter moon. So that would be a three week period, right? 21 days. It's a good time period to really um, institute a new habit, right? Um, and since Mars and Venus are now in Virgo, that's a big, that's a big part of the Virgo signature is your habits, right? Your routines and your habits, the things that you do on a regular basis that um, create you as the highest version of yourself to condition and purify you as a physical vessel, right? That is the Virgo energy. That with Mars coming into Virgo today and Venus already here, this is going to be highlighted pretty strongly over the next couple of weeks. And so the commitment that I'm making is to institute um, a healing and master attunements, Reiki master attunements on myself every day. And so I'm going to be tracking it and recording it and giving little updates on social media every day about what I experience and how it unfolds. And I really invite people to participate um, either through Facebook or Telegram has a great chat function. So there's a good way that we can all kind of like track each other, hold each other accountable. I've done this several times in other um, involved with other groups and I, I've successfully completed it. So once I set the tone for it, the commitment, it's it's something that I know that I can do. So I'm going to be doing again. And it doesn't have to be Reiki attunements. You could be self Reiki. Um, I did that before I came on and you can already see the the huge difference. I feel the huge difference in my presentation and my energy between uh, usually having, I do have a morning meditation, but it gets very cerebral and very heady be before I get on here. And I just did 20 minutes of um, 528 Hertz with a self Reiki treatment right over my third eye and my crown chakra. And it really, whew, it really helped ground me. And at the same time um, helped adjust what's coming in because it is pretty strong. It's coming in. And we are in this uh, period right now that I f it feels like, a respite. I know in some ways it doesn't, especially with all of the energetics and the solar energy that's coming in. Solar cycle 25 is certainly not disappointing, that's for sure. And so there is a constant influx, it seems like, every other day of solar radiation and plasma um, and the Earth's weakening magnetic field as a result of um, a magnetic excursion that is uh, predicted based on a cycle. The 
which is not the same as a pole shift. That's a pretty significant change, but a magnetic excursion does um, suggest that there's going to be some, some sort of magnetic shift and the field is weakening around the planet in order to accommodate that movement. Um, and we're going to, there's the shift certainly has been on people's minds for a while. Last November, I definitely had, um, a, a shamanic journey type of experience in my sleep when there was a really large astrological transit that opened some things up and I was definitely like experiencing the shift in real time outside of time right because it hadn't happened yet but there's there's so much happening right here and there's so much that is supporting this process and it can be really uncomfortable but um, one of the things that came up in, in a side conversation um, and pointing me to somebody else's social media post about it is that remember when you're having these symptoms especially in conjunction with either the schumann resonance doing what it's doing or specifically the solar weather landing um, on the planet or near the planet when you, I, you know, when you have symptoms and I usually have very strong symptoms. Um, it was pretty obvious yesterday that I was having very strong symptoms. We just realize that those symptoms are a response to, um, higher amounts of, uh, electromagnetic radiation, higher energy plasma coming into, um, the atmosphere and it does impact us. And so when it's uncomfortable and you're kind of resisting it, cause you're like, I don't like this. It doesn't feel good. I don't know what it is. Just keep in mind that it's in some ways burning off this density. And in some ways it's the pain is, is a result of a reconfiguration of our own electromagnetic field, our own response, right? The DNA down to the DNA level responds to this uh, electromagnetic radiation. And that's not new information. That's something that's been um, studied and known for a while. This is where mutations in the, in the, in the genome and in the, expression of the genes can come in through radiation. So there's a lot going on here, but ultimately we are dissolving the density in real time. And it is the solar cycles. It is the cycle of our movement through the galaxy. And it's certainly the um, weakening of the field of our own planet that is all feeding into this. And so the challenge or the commitment is meant to um, get us up to speed for uh, the next full moon and really instituting these really important and healthy and essential habits, um, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be Reiki. It could be meditation. It could be a prayer practice. It could be um, going out and hiking or being in nature for a certain amount of time every day and just making a commitment to carve out that time. And so I invite you to participate and you can find Catalyst Energies on social media. And that's all linked in the description box. So let's start looking at the actual symbolic representation of what has come through today. So I hope everyone's doing well, taking very good care of themselves. Um, it has been kind of rough the last couple of days. So do what you need to do to uh, take care of yourself. Definitely drinking lots of water. Water definitely helps these processes so much more, just like anything else. If you are not <laughs> properly lubricated and um, the fluids are not... Um, at maximum capacity to move and to conduct this um, energy through your body, it will burn out your circuitry. So hydration is such a huge part of all this process. So, oh, wow. Um, let's get into the reading for today. I hope um, we'll see how this lands with people. So the dissolution of density. We're going to look at this pretty directly. Now we have a lot of Trump energy. When I say Trump, like major arcana energy in this horizontal axis that we see today. We have um, the alchemy or art is reversed. We have the magician at the heart here. And then we have the devil reversed. I mean, you know, people read these cards and interpret them a lot differently. Um, the devil is in fact the trap of materialism as far as I'm concerned. So the fact that it's reversed and as our outcome today based on all of these things is a real potential here to utilize um, a sort of a, a kind of 
uh, fission, right? And we're going to talk about um, the release of energy and nuclear fusion versus nuclear fission and how things work on an atomic level. I mean, we don't understand it all. And I have no doubt that we have been led to believe certain aspects about our physical universe that may not actually be accurate. Um, and that's that's a conversation for a different time. But what I will say is that I'm not going to pre present these information as if it's the end all be all, but it is what we understand so far, at least in the scientific literature. This is why I I personally seek out lots of types of different information and don't allow myself to get trapped in one type of perspective because you really do lose out on manifestation potential and coming to new creation and ideas when you push out one side or the other, which is the alchemy card, as we see here, or the art, right? Number 14, the art of the alchemy. This does actually bring this, bring this up, right? That we you know, need to live out both sides of the contrast if we ultimately want to understand something and bring those contrasts together in order to create something new. Now, the problem that we're having, I would say collectively, is that our south node is in Sagittarius. You can see that this is the Sagittarian card. The ninth house represents Sagittarius. This is the alchemy card because, and the alchemy symbol, because it is understanding. You have to bring these two opposing forces together and, 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 you know, render them down to their pure constituent forms and then bring them together, dissolve and combine, right? That is the true essence of alchemy in and of itself. So we have to live out these contrasts. We have to be able to understand both sides of a dualistic nature, um, both sides of the dichotomy, right? In order to truly understand any type of subject. And it's when we are able to embody both aspects of duality, bring them together is when we create something new. So as our causal factor today, as we are uh, moving into the heart of the moment, which is very mercurial, right? We have the magician here at the heart, our ability co to consciously manifest an idea into form and um, a very strong self-realization of our ability to, to manifest our own reality and making an idea come true, bringing an idea into a physical form. This is, this is the essence of the magician. But, become, but coming from that, right? So we have Sagittarius, which is the opposite of Gemini. Gemini is in fact the, um, one of the rulerships of, of Mercury. And what's interesting about Mer this alchemy card is it is also Sagittarius, but what it also is, which is interesting, is Mercury in its sixth house, right? Sixth house, the Virgo house. We just talked about Virgo and how important these habits, these, these routines, the actual analysis, the detail orientation, putting things where they belong. You know, in a mundane way, Virgos have this, um, you know, this stereotype to be very anal retentive and um, hyper you know, fixated on control. And it's really about a focus on putting things where they belong. Um, and the Virgo essence is ultimately to be of service. It's not meant to be of, it's not meant to be for the sake of the individual's gratification. If you got to Virgo and that's what you're doing, I mean, that is some serious dark magic right there. But the essence of the Virgo energy. So the alchemy card is Mercury in the sixth house, Mercury doing the sixth house work, which is in fact um, purifying the vessel, right? Getting the cauldron, cre you know, creating and, and clearing out the cauldron, preparing it for the alchemy, um, putting things where they belong, right? Purifying the constituent parts of water and fire, for instance, right? Making sure that there's no... Um, there's nothing here that's impure. That's nothing here that's going to be, you know, like an alloy, for instance, is a number of different metals that are brought together to create a substance. And we want things to be down to their base parts. So when we're reversed, so this, think about it as nuclear fusion, which is what a sun or a star actually, that's how it creates its energy is through nuclear fusion. It's a really simple process of two hydrogen atoms coming together and forming helium. And when they do this, they release energy as a result of their fusion, right? That is how a star releases energy in its main sequence um, period and, and provide life on this planet. Fusion, nuclear fusion. If you think about it in terms of procreation and sexual alchemy, um, 
around for procreation of an actual physical life. It's the same thing. You have these two elements that are coming together because they have opposite charge, right? They are attracted to each other based on their charge and then they come together and they form this union they create something new that's more than just themselves individually and then they release energy as a result and when we are but you know nuclear fission also releases energy as we've you know come to realize through the use of the atomic you know the atomic bomb the discovery and the creation of the atomic bomb um and that process also releases an incredible amount of energy. And what is nuclear fission? It's when we are splitting an atom in and of itself. But that also can go with the splitting apart of these, um, these new elements, also creating energy. So we have this causal factor here today that represents not the bringing together, but the splitting apart, the, the tearing apart that is also releasing the energy for something um, new to be manifested, to, to split apart and to have these pure constituent parts available for our, our that mercurial energy of the magician to actually utilize, right? So we're splitting apart. Um, we are tearing apart, possibly getting into the extremes of, of our position, right? Getting really into one side or the other. Um, and we are talking about fusion versus fission. Both of those release an a lot of energy until you get to a certain point. This is when a star starts to die is when it, when it, um, when it, a star starts to die when it runs out of hydrogen. Um, it's, it's a fixed, it's a fixed cycle, right? It's a closed loop ultimately. So the star starts running out of hydrogen. Um, and in order to keep it from collapsing in on itself, it starts to, um, you know, process helium into an into another into another element and as it gets hotter and more pressure it provides more opportunities for more elements once the core of a star starts producing iron right um it no longer releases energy but it requires energy in the system and this is like the beginning of the end for a star's lifetime so there is a point at which the um fusion can no longer create energy as it gets more dense, right? Oh, there it is, as it gets more dense. And that's what we're talking about is the density of matter um, increases as its atomic weight increases. Um, there's more um, density in the core, right? In the nucleus of the atom, for instance. So I know this is chemistry, but this is all related to life. Um, and alchemy is the spiritual form of, of chemistry in some ways, right? And we, there is a splitting apart, but there is, um, and, and certainly there's a lack of understanding here as well as this causal factor. But I would see this as an opportunity here as the density is dissolving, right? As these, uh, as we are actually going through a period of fission rather than fusion in this moment, it actually creates um, the essence from which to create something new and right at the heart here we have the we have the magician right all of the possibility of making an idea come true so it doesn't come without this this um tearing apart though and i know that it can be really on like in your relationships in the macrocosm um in the sense of a social or cultural understanding we can see this fission happening right the tearing apart the splitting apart the splitting of worlds i mean that's been something that has been pretty obvious um, for a while and many people have talked about it now that it is happening though and there's a lot of resistance to that or there's a lot of um thinking that you're just going to go off into 5D and then never have to deal with any of the um, reality. The, the, the thing is, we're all still here and we made a choice to be here. So we're going to go through this process together if we're still here. So we can't just accept or expect that we're just going to fly off into 5D and not be part of the transition process. But here is the fission, right? And there is energy released from this fission that is harnessable, right? And so what are we harnessing it for? Well, the, the density is dissolving and we can um, really cut our attachment to the materialism that is represented by the devil, for instance, right? Is the trap and illusion of materialism being all that there is. 
we, we can we can this will lead to this process if we harness if we harness the energy from this splitting apart, whatever it is, it can be on so many levels. And it's not to say that we're not coming back together, but remember, this is the South Node. This is K2 of the, of the lunar nodal axis, the where we've been karmically, what we've done, which is Sagittarius, which is the heart of the Scorpion, Antares, and also asteroid Juno is retrograde here. You know, we talked about this yesterday because of where the moon came in and gave us this uh, moment here of how to focus our attention, concentrate our attention on the big picture, because that's going to be necessary as the splitting apart becomes more and more palpable to us. And Venus in a square to the nodal axis today, exactly, while Jupiter and Mars are in opposition, are all playing into this. So, and we'll get to the astrology. For now, I'm just, we're going to keep looking at these um, archetypal representations. So at the heart here, we have the mercurial energy. And where is Mercury? Well, it's definitely in Leo right now. And then we also have um, the North Node in Gemini, right? We have Black Moon Lilith in Gemini. And this is going to come in handy soon as we start to really work with the energy of the Hyades star seeds. And there's going to be more coming out with them. They're, they're, they're making themselves really much more known to me um, and, and really having a relationship with what they have to offer because they're going to be directly linked to the uh, to Rahu and where we're headed before this Pleiadian revival that comes when the nodes shift into Taurus and Scorpio. And that's coming later, but we'll get a taste of that in the eclipse season this winter because that's where the nodes will actually be um, before, you know, the nodes won't be there. The, the full moon that will be eclipsed will be um, on that axis, even though the nodes will technically still be in Gemini and Sagittarius. So we have this ability here of possibility of making an idea come true. And there's a lot of energy we can harness from the fission, right? The, the splitting apart um, and taking the opportunity to purify those constituents, to look at them in a different way and to harness them in order to um, utilize our creative powers. So we have this at the heart of us today. We have, and I'm gonna show it to you real quick just so you can see how awesome this card is, right? Is um, the Magus or um, us collectively, our Magi. So the Magician, it has all of the elements at his disposal. It's very mercurial. You got the, the serpent here kind of coiled and, you know, in this shape around uh, behind its head. It's It's got a lot of, there's the bird imagery. You have lightning and light coming off of, he's riding, he's literally riding these like light beams. And if you look here, he's, you know, he's kind of, you know, got a smile on his face. I can't even really tell what this is, if it's like some sort of binding thing with his feet, like binding them together into one. Um, but there's also a sense of innocence here and, um, you know, trust in the universe, right? Because there's nothing clothing this individual, right? Hermes, right? Or, or, or Mercury is the essence of this card. Um, and, you know, the story of Hermes or, or Mercury is pretty significant in and of itself in terms of mythology. So maybe um, that's something that we can get into at some point. Um, so I want to dive more into it as well. So we see here, we that's the heart of the matter. So where are we energetically rooted? What is kind of running in the background in the subconscious? Because it's all in the subconscious, right? That's where it all comes from is our subconscious energy. Well, here is the muse, right? This is our inspiration, upliftment, imagination. This is when we tap into the collective unconscious, when we tap into the transcendental realm of imagination and we become inspired with something seemingly from outside of us from, you know, inspired by God, inspired by source, inspired by our higher self, right? These are artistic inspirations. People often talk about um, a muse when they come in contact with new ideas, right? That they came not from their own mind, but came through them and moved through their mind. Again, here's the magician. The magician is that ability within our minds to manifest this pure idea of inspiration, the muse. And this usually comes in the 12th house energy. We've talked about this the last couple of days because there's been the hanged man. There's been the scribe, both of these representing number 12, the 12th house and Pisces, like this ability to get into this liminal space and this um, Akashic 
vibratory field of potential in order to be inspired. It's not always going to come from our mind. I think that's some of the hardest thing that we've um, collectively have to deal with. It's our mind that activates the idea and brings it into manifestation. The inspiration is coming from somewhere spiritual and energetic and um, imagination, right? The muse coming from seemingly outside of us and then inspiring us to actually act on it in our minds and um, with that mercurial energy. Now, where this is moving to in terms of our uh, conscious awareness, so we have this inspiration. We At the heart of us is this mercurial magician energy that we can make anything come, you know, thoughts create things. I mean, our attention, you know, power goes where attention flows, doesn't it? And so we have this here, but really where it's meant to pop out in the, you know, in our contribution, the, the top of the chart, the the release from the crown is getting out of our karmic trench, isn't it? Um, there are difficult patterns of self-defeating thoughts and feelings that a lot of, most of us are dealing with, right? This is about coming out of this karmic trench. And so the intention is to break these patterns, right? We don't want to keep digging down and down and down and ignoring the rest of what we are planting and cultivating, right? And we do know that that's part of what we are um, here to do is to is to cultivate and to prepare the medium for a whole new growth. So, but part of this is recognizing that we just keep digging the hole deeper and not actually getting back out and keep planting the seeds. We just keep digging and digging and digging until we're trapped. And it gets harder to escape the deeper that we dig the trench. And so it does require conscious effort to climb out, to come out. And this is where we can really make our contribution. Where our attention is, is where we have an impact on the rest of the, of the rest of the world, how we have an impact on the whole field of consciousness, not just ours, but everybody, right? Everybody matters now. Everybody equally matters. And they've always have, but now it's, it's a it's a prerequisite for this shift, in a dimensional shift, right? For this upgrade, for this evolution in spiritual consciousness. It is now a prereq. It's required um, that everybody is at the same level energetically in terms of participating and making conscious choices. So we can be inspired right now. We can let this inspiration move through us. We can literally tap into the planet. And this is what I was talking about with the Schumann resonance and the solar energy, like literally and very, very consciously, energetically tapping into the Earth's grid system. So you can do this through your star chakra, Earth star chakra, right? That's like, you know, couple inches below your root chakra, you know, focusing it on in meditation, you know, focusing your Reiki um, or energy work to that area. Um, sound healing is amazing for that. You get really low frequencies, you know, th about 300 hertz and below will really help um, in this way. Um, so this is, but this is the contribution, right? This is where the attention can go is on this process for each of us, getting ourselves out of these self-defeating thoughts and habits, getting ourselves out of the trench and realizing it takes conscious effort. We can't just expect that it's going to just flip-flop one day and all of a sudden we're going to be like conscious co-creators without actually having to do any work. That's the Virgo energy. And it's a good thing that Mars is coming into Virgo now too, along with Venus, because now we're going to have that warrior energy that wants to, has the drive to act on this and the act on, you know, utilizing our own root system, our own stabilization to actually um, work work on ourselves. And part of that is this realizing. And so when we get caught up in fear, you know, learning the subtle difference between being cautious and aware, but not feeding fear, that's, that's difficult. That's something that is a skill that you have to practice. You have to know what it feels like in your body. But when you do that, I mean, especially having the magician at the heart of things today, we can really utilize this conscious manifestation energy to, in fact, dig ourselves out of this trench and then, um, 
break these patterns. And once we break these patterns, then we realize that we are always free. And when we realize that we're always free, then we will not let people, we will not let any corrupt government, tyrannical government, tyrannical people um, try to gaslight us into giving up our sovereignty so they can control us, right? But we have to get ourselves out of the self-defeating thought that we are not free in order to be free. And there's so much potential for this today. And it will come from this kind of splitting or tearing apart Heart, but the release of energy is totally harnessable. And it's also not even so much, but it is the dissolution of the density. And it's coming in from the solar, um, from our own sun. And the sun is bringing it in also from the center of the galaxy because of our um, rotation around the galaxy as a solar system. And so the sun is being exposed to more. It's bringing it in. And then its own sun cycle is also impacting our direct planet. And it is dissolving um, the density. And so we can use this energy um, uh, in some ways of, of it breaking everything apart in order to um, redirect it into where we want to go. OK, um, real and the, these in the solar activity and the Schumann resonance, it's all connected to this process. And lots of people have been talking about it. Um, sometimes I think it's, it's really confusing um, in terms of the way certain people uh, communicate it. And some people I feel like are really on point with it. So you just have to figure it out, you know, track these things on your own and see how it feels in your own body. Cause that's really how you're going to know. But this is really laying it out for us right now, because like I said, here is where um, the dissolution, right? This is the release of um, the trap of materialism, right? The overturning the a trap of materialism to actually dissolve the density and to free yourself from the karmic wheel here that is represented with these two cells in meiosis, right? The two or yeah, meiosis is when the sex cells are uh, uh separating right when they are when they're splitting apart in order to duplicate and mitosis is when any other cell is just uh dividing in order to uh multiply but meiosis specifically is where the you know the dna the sex cells and the chromosomes that's where they do their thing but this is the trap right of materialism and there's nothing wrong with it it's not like um saturn and capricorn and even this idea of satan or the devil in and of itself i mean you see in this card that the that the the goat has the third eye open and is very much smiling and it's very you know it's very phallic you can see this whole process of this phallic i mean it really is very phallic plus you have the the circle here represented um, you know, it's the lingam and the yoni, right? The, these two aspects together. And remember, this is also part of the alchemy, the Sagittarian energy, the bringing together of these two opposing forces to create something new. This is kind of how, this is the whole point of life. The trap is thinking that there is nothing else but this material existence. And that's 3D, right? And that's dissolving. And so we have a real potential today to really release ourselves from the trap of this um, uh, materialism and to release our, and, and not necessarily um, physically, some people are going to do that. Some people are exiting because they've chosen to um, do this work in a different realm, right? Or to come back and be part of it, um, to be awake as the next new soul on this planet. So there are different ways to go about this. But ultimately, the goal, the, the spiritual evolution of humanity is to embody our quantum potential in our physical bodies. But that means that we have to get beyond the trap of materialism. And boy, there is a huge potential potential for this today within us um, in order to do this. It's really, really strong. And this is why um, committing to some sort of 21 day practice, whatever it is for you, um, I think can really um, support this process because this is just, it feels like just the beginning in some ways. We've been doing this for a long time, but now it's really amping up. Um, and having two full moons in Aquarius back to back, I mean, this dynamic of Leo and Aquarius of sovereign individuals that make a collective is a big part of going into the age of Aquarius. Eventually, we want to make sure that we are not the Borg um, and giving up all of our freedom and sovereignty. We want to be individual sovereign people that come into a collective that is able to hold a quantum potential. You can't do that with this. 
And that's the trap of materialism. And ultimately, the trap of the devil is that people f um, forfeit their own um, eternal soul, essentially, to have material comfort or desires um, uh, satisfied um, because it's such a strong, it's so strong, right? There's no denying that. So there is some guidance as per usual uh, along the way here that we can um, interact with. So the muse, right? Um, part of this guidance is the, the Buddha prepares. And this is, again, a time of inner preparation. Um, you have to go within and reach within to find your power, to find your purpose. You may feel like it's a standstill and you may feel like you're waiting. Remember that hanged man yesterday that was reversed? There's a real strong um, resistance to this to to going into this space but if you want to find inspiration this is where you're going to find it it's not going to necessarily be in you constantly acting out um in some way this is about preparation and there does feel like august is meant to be um leading into fall and the fall equinox this is a preparation time you know you we're being given opportunities to clear the density and dissolve it within us so it ripples out into the collective and is a chain reaction that is in fact what a catalyst is it is in a type of substance that catalyzes or triggers a chemical reaction without reducing itself that's the whole point of this practice and what I've brought forward, at least my vision, right, is to to be a catalyst that has a chain reaction over and, and then the next person is a catalyst, the next person is a catalyst. And then we, you know, have this chain reaction through our Aquarian, our Aquarian uh, collective so we can evolve and 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 ascend right evolve in our spiritual consciousness because we're not going to be able to hold what's coming in um even at like whatever you know however you however you conceptualize the great solar flash um uh it's important that we realize this so that we um we we can't hold it unless we uh, provide the vessel moving forward sorry i got distracted because telegram loves to just like pop up even if you mute all of the notifications so um it gets distracting so the buddha prepares right it's a time of inner preparation and if you want to tap into this inspiration at the core of who you are and from even the planet herself you have to go within right and you have to harness and cultivate this power within yourself and you know the gorilla is an interesting connection here because it's saying take the time to listen compassionately to those you love especially family family members and so you know gorillas for as much as they are very aggressive in a lot of ways and very powerful they're very group oriented um and very much connected to their families and their um, family groups and so listening compassionately to those you care about is one way that you can do this inner preparation and be inspired because you never know what's going to come out of a open and compassionate and loving conversation, especially with people that you've split apart from, right? Um, bonds will become degraded if they are not nourished regularly. And we can't expect to... Um, have healthy relationships if we don't put some energy into them. Now, is this uh, a part of our family? Is this uh, meant to be in inspired by connecting to our soul family, to connecting to our spirit team? That's something that we're going to have to each come to on our own. But people are constantly changing and evolving. That's something that is very clear and it's happening now at a much rapid rate. So somebody that you had serious issues or disagreements with or, or tension with, you know, just yesterday could be um, had a huge breakthrough in the last 24 hours. And you might be able to actually have a conversation with them that isn't so tense or as tense. So people are always constantly in changing. And so give people the benefit of the doubt and get deep with them. This is, again, this part of inner preparation. This is how we allow ourselves to be inspired is to have these conversations and maybe even having a conversation where you kind of let the wall down a little bit and see people just for the human that they are you may actually find some inspiration in that conversation or inspire just in the fact that somebody had a huge change overnight or maybe you had the huge change and somebody gave you the benefit of the doubt to reach out and talk and that inspires you as well. So the inspiration can come from these relationships, these conversations, and it's important that we, if we want relationships to be, to be 
strong and to be nourishing that we have to put the time into nourishing them as well. Um, which can be kind of difficult with a lot of Leo energy because it's very much focused on the individual's expression. So take some time to, you know, balance this out a little bit, which, you know, it is very Aquarian. Aquarian is very humanitarian, um, is open to the idea that we're all here together. And one thing I will say about the muse too, in terms of inspiration, um, is where Saturn is right now. Um, Saturn is, uh, you know, we're going to have a Saturn opposition pretty soon here be with the sun and Saturn. So um, we'll talk about that more when it gets closer to it. But Saturn is in this position now that is making, giving us the structure and the form and even the responsibility to find our inspiration in these quiet moments. So um, maybe it's time to listen more than it is to, um, you know, express. And like I said, that's hard with a lot of Leo, especially Mercury and Leo. Um, there is a real propensity to want to express ourselves in our communication um, and it, within our immediate environment, like very, very brightly. And when Mercury is Kazemi, the sun, right? When Mercury meets the sun, this is going to be even more brilliant um, and something that we'll have to be aware of. So Here's our friend, the polar bear, again. I mean, how how many times, you know, before it becomes statistically impossible that this is a coincidence? Speak your truth, even um, respectfully and compassionately, because this is part of how we get ourselves out of the karmic trench, right? Stand up for yourself. You know, don't keep like, you know, there's this idea that I keep getting in my mind right now of just like, well, if I dig this trench deep enough, nobody will ever find me. Um, and that's just not going to work, is it? A polar bear, stand up for yourself. Speak your speak truth respectfully and compassionately. There's that compassionate speaking again. Um, it goes both ways. Listening and speaking are all part of communication. But when it comes to our contribution, right, the top of this reading, we are talking about standing up for yourself, speaking truth, no attachment to outcome. This is part of getting out of our old patterns of just kind of like folding in or digging ourselves deeper and not even being able to get out of these sabotaging types of mindsets. And with the divine physician reversed, right? We, we, we see, you know, this is, he's got the caduceus on the chest, you know, Reiki energy right to this woman's heart. He's holding the bucket with, you know, that goes into the well, right? The well, the spiritual flow, the healing energy of water, right? The emotional connection of water as well. Um, there, but what's important to realize about this card when it's reversed is it reminds us that we are losing sight of self-care requirements. And when it comes to thoughts and ideas and um, feelings, they are directly linked to our healing process, right? And so we have to attend to these ingredients, right, in order to really heal and to exercise self-care. Um, thoughts create things, right? We want to get out of self-sabotaging beliefs. This is part of where our conscious energy is going today and can go today. And we want to speak truth. I mean, the polar bear, this is like over and over and over. Just speak truth, right? Compassionately. You don't have to attack people, right? But you can stand up for yourself and come at it from your heart. And maybe you just need some more self-care around that heart space, right? Um, thoughts and ideas are very powerful and our emotions are very powerful. And this is what heals. And so this reversal is a reminder that we need to put some more time into this, right? And rather than digging the trench deeper, we have to acknowledge that the deeper we dig the trench, this is what we're creating for ourselves. The polar bear is showing us the way. Stand in your truth. Stand in truth with a capital T. Speak it. Stand up for yourself. You know, if nobody, you know, whatever this is for you, like in from your real heart, not based on what somebody else is projecting at you or what you see on social media over and over and over and over again or on the news, right? Because they have an agenda to create something that is not in our best interest. We, as a as a collective and each individually have this work to do. Um, and if we do, then, you know, we can really harness this energy to create something and to really um, catalyze the dissolution of this density even more. It's really, really powerful today. So, and our moon is still in Aries, right? We have those, um, like I said, the opposition with Jupiter, the opposition with Jupiter and, um, yeah. 
Divine Christ Spirit, please heal me of this genetic anomaly and I'll throw it in the garbage. Oh, that's interesting um, at the top of this today. So that is that is very fascinating. So here is today's chart where Moon is still in Aries, of course. Now, there's a couple things that happened already. So let's, let's look at those as we... Um, embark on today's journey. This again, getting out your handy, um, handy dandy study guide can really help in this process. And that's why I create it so that it's like a syllabus for what to expect for the week. So let's start here with, uh, now there's a couple, and there's a couple connections here to fix stars that I'm going to bring up. Of course, Mars is in conjunction with Regulus right now in its opposition to Jupiter, and then we'll move into Virgo. So the heart of the lion, right? There's that heart, right? But the heart of the lion has to be um, fully, um, it has to be full and healed. You have to have a functioning heart chakra. It has to be um, strong and able to pump the um the chi through the entire body um in a way that's not you know compromised in any way and it and it's all for the good of of humanity it's all to be shared right that's where mars is right now so let's look, look let's look at the moon first so speaking of saturn the first thing that we're going to get out of here the first thing we're going to look at here is that the moon um overnight early this morning late last night depending on where you are this is 2:15 uh, Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. All right, here is the uh, moon in a sextile to a retrograde Saturn, right? Saturn is in this position of Aquarius that represents um, coming into the second decan of Aquarius, which is really represented by Mercury in Aquarius. The Six of Swords is the second decan of Aquarius. So science, right? And the idea that we can kind of consolidate all of our focus and our mental energy onto like that singular um focus of power that moves through um, a collective of individuals, right? Humanitarian, whereas uh, Leo is about the individual human. Um, Aquarius is about humanita humanity um, as, an, as, as, a, as a singular concept. So Saturn here in this position is um, really there is, is a lot of density with Saturn. Of course, it represents Capricorn, the material matrix of reality. So this matrix of reality within us, right, that is expressed within our own microcosm, within our own bodies, within our own sense of who we are and where we end and the rest begins, there is this sense here that we need, our inspiration will come from quiet moment, right? That we have to get into a quiet moment in order to, really pull in this inspiration as we talked about with the reading during here's the sabian symbol during a silent hour a person receives a new inspiration which may change her or his life so we have to rely on inner inspiration um, in order to do that and saturn is in its rulership co-rulership in aquarius so it's very powerful it provides a very um you know, a very strong container in order for this to happen. And the sextile, right, that 60 degree angle that we can make an investment in order to get the full harmony out of it. Our moon is in uh, 10 degrees Aries, right? This is the power resulting from our consciousness, our ego consciousness, um, wanting to integrate everything into some sort of ordered structure, right? Because in Aries, again, we're moving into the second decan of Aries, which is um, the three of wands, the sun in Aries. So it, these, these concepts, these, these archetypes represent, you know, virtue, right? And not in a way that we have been you know, kind of conditioned to be like, ooh, virtuous, it means like you have these really strong morals and you're always, you know, helping other people or, you know, you're standing up for whatever. Virtue is an inner, it's an inner experience. And it comes from a sense of, okay, I, I want me as me, right? The subjective I am that I am to be kind of the focal point or the, or the centralizing power for what is otherwise kind of like biological and emotional drives that are kind of just, you know, the part of just being a human being and trying to figure out your place in the world. Now we're starting to get an idea of like, okay, I have all this desire to actualize myself. Now let's start pulling it into some sort of potency. So 
there is a pulling in emotionally, intuitively, right, in our the moon or how we feel that is very harmonious with what Saturn is providing, which is a structure that allows us to tap into our own inspiration. Um, in fact, it's making it almost impossible not to because Saturn is such a strong wall and it's so formal. And so the moon you know, we have this desire for each of our own ego consciousness to start centralizing. And we can apply that to where Saturn is um, because it'll allow us a lot more smooth transition into just like this central I am that I am allowing the inspiration to come directly into into you as opposed to being from the outside of you into you. It's, it's a direct connection. And then but right after that is when the moon comes into a um, in conjunction with Chiron, right? And this is, and, and Chiron's retrograde, of course. So this, right after this, this was early this morning, the moon kind of meets this, you know, and we have a very direct connection to this wounding, right? And to this idea that we are, there's a frustration, a natural frustration when we hold the seed of all of the potential growth within us and we want it to change right away. And in fact, um, we try to make it happen and it doesn't work. And that's what frustrates us. And connected to Chiron, right? This is this victim, you know, savior role that keeps coming back over and over again and it keeps coming up because we keep getting triggered we keep having our wound poked in some ways that something is not happening fast enough we see that not you know we we do intuitively feel what all the potential of our growth is but we want it to happen now and this is kind of like the you know, the adolescent frustration of just like, I want it now. Um, and we can't have it now because that's not how a seed grows, right? The seed doesn't like, you know, go from a seed to a full grown tree in a hot second. And there's nothing that you can do to make that happen necessarily. But so we're, we're feeling that, right? We're feeling that. And it actually doesn't feel as awful as it could be. It's certainly frustrating, but I think we have a handle on this now. And especially that connection to Saturn right before it, where it's like, okay, I see here how I need to get into my center, how the inspiration is coming from within me, from a source that is not getting imposed upon me. And in, in that moment, as the moon then makes this connection to Chiron right after, it's like, okay, I, I feel it, I recognize it, I acknowledge it, and now I'm going to transmute it, okay? Um, it doesn't feel nearly as terrible as other times that the moon comes around and meets Chiron. So um, I feel like we're making progress, um, actual progress right now, which is really exciting. Um, and that's not to say that there will not be incredible challenges or a backlash to this, because there will be. I mean, that's just how it goes in this universe, right? It's always about this dichotomy that always moving back and forth. But we have the tools and we have these cycles that we can, again, harness if we want to in order to um, maximize our ability to co-create very consciously. So from there is when, you know, the rest of these uh, major transits are happening as the moon then passes Chiron. So we have um, Venus, which is going to be in direct square to the nodes, right? So there's that T-square with the new, the lunar nodal axis. And we talked about a bunch of this yesterday, but now it's without the influence of that, of the it's without the influence of the Aries moon that was in a quincunx, right? And in conjunct, it's still there, but not nearly as strong because it gave us that moment of like, okay, we do on some level intuitively still need to focus our attention um, into the crystal ball and look at the whole pattern and not get distracted. Um, while Venus is just like, I just need to be, I just need to put myself on this canvas. Like I need to express my unique signature no matter what. Um, and now that that's happening directly, right, that T-square is happening directly, we have Rahu that is that quiver filled with arrows, right, where we are headed evolutionarily on a soul level is to pierce through our obstacles with our with our mind, right, with our magician quality, whereas the south node of NK2, where we've been, what we need to let go of and release is this idea that we are all here to, um, you know, those of us who think that we're more evolved are here to help everybody else. 
And um, that's that time is over. It, the, 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 what we really need to do is each person take full responsibility for their resonance and their choices and be willing to um, really uh, um, practice and hone that skill of piercing through your obstacles of your own ego. And this is where our soul is being pulled in order to evolve. It's very much about the individual on that level, which um, again, the sun and Mercury and Leo is certainly, um, you know, especially because the sun is soon going to be in a sextile with the North Node in a matter of days. And so that will become um, a direct investment from the sun in its rulership of Leo um, in a sextile to the North Node. In the meantime, though, this T-square um, with Venus, this is how we release the tension or harness the intention, the um, tension of this opposition, right? Because the opposition is pulling, it's creating potential energy that one way or the other could go. And Venus, that square is helping us. And it, so it has something to do with us being uniquely ourselves and expressing uniquely ourselves and putting ourselves on the canvas. It doesn't have to be perfect or even formed. It just It's just an expression of who we are. And this helps us see who we are. It helps us see where we need to do more work, right? Um, and this will, again, it's, 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 a, it's a square, right? So you have to lean into it. It's uncomfortable, but and the friction is uncomfortable, but what you get out of it is growth, right? You get out of it growth. And when we're talking about Venus, it's very palpable. It's what we are sensitive to in our material reality, um, our resources, our relationships, all the things that have value to us, so we are wanting to be the canvas in some ways. Our material world, you know, we're very sensitive to it. Venus is in her fall position in Virgo, so it's not very easy. But we do have Mars coming up behind to actually act on this Virgo energy, whereas Venus has been much, um, had a difficult time, like, really sitting in it, in that Virgo energy, like, um, being, you know, Venus wants to be in the medium. She doesn't want to be doing the work of the root system necessarily. So um, it's been a challenge. But now that Mars is here, we're getting this infusion in some ways. And we can take, speaking of that, this opposition between Mars and Jupiter. Man, talk about potential energy, um, this tension here, right? You have the warrior energy and you have the leadership energy pulling on each other, balancing each other out, like really, um, you know, getting a firm grip on either side here um, in order to create, um, you know, if you can find the fulcrum on this opposition, man, you can do anything, right? You can really step into your own power and you can really um, tap into the conscious totality of being on a collective level, which is where Aquarius is at that last degree. And this is where Jupiter is expanding this space within us, um, utilizing this conscious totality of being and Mars. It's almost like Mars is like taking that energy and releasing it through his um, ambitious nature that Mars is, right? He is the action hero. So he does, right? He, he, he penetrates, he goes forward. And so he's releasing all of the, the energy. And part of that is, um, taking that from what Jupiter is expanding upon in all of us. So from this, from this opposition, you know, Mars just bursts forward and then comes into Virgo, which is very much about, okay, now I have to look at the actual form of this and start to, you know, negotiate where it actually is going to go and how it's going to be of most use. The first degree of Virgo is, you know, this is like a caricature, but it's like the significant features, like you're looking at a portrait and the significant features of a person's head, because it's a, a, a portrait of them, are artistically emphasized. So the thing, it, it's very discriminatory, right? You're discriminating, but you're also using the two aspects of analysis and intuition, because Virgo is an earth sign. And so it is analytical, because Mercury is the ruler, but it also is the feminine 
signature of Mercury, which is using your intuition, um, getting down into the darkness underneath, like pulling in what you need from the environment in order to help you grow as a person. This is why habits and routines are part of the sixth house energy. This is why healing crises usually come about in the sixth house. So Mars is our warrior entering Virgo. And granted, it's not necessarily um, the best position, right? Mars would prefer to be in Aries or Mars would prefer to be in Capricorn, but it does have a certain amount of action to it. Um, the analysis part is the action to it. And Mars is really going to um, infuse that. And it part of it is taking that energy from Jupiter. Somebody had posted on social media today in their own astrology, um, just about how this that opposition is like a quantum leap forward. And I think that it can be um, a quantum leap forward for us individually um, by taking the potential energy of uh, um, the collective, the innovative, um, outside of the box, futuristic energy that Aquarius represents and taking that expansion of that energy within us and, and taking that and utilizing it as we move, Mars moves into Virgo. So there's, there's, there's a, okay, hold on one last thing here before I wrap this up. Um, so fixed star or uh asteroid series right asteroid series is in uh the last degree of taurus okay gonna move into um zero degrees gemini very soon and what is that that's fixed star alcyon right alcyon is uh also you know a pleiadian marking we've talked about series she's the goddess of the grain of agriculture she gives of she gives the the sustenance that nourishes us um, through her own cycles, she is um, she represents the necessity for the contraction and release as well in a natural way for all of the growth. There has to be a time where we go within and go in and hibernate, right? This is the representation of a seasonal growth cycle that Ceres represents as an archetype and this goddess. And so she's been in the Pleiadian territory now for, for a little while in the late degrees of Taurus and about to hit Alcyon. Now, the thing about Alcyon that is really interesting that I um, am learning is that it is the it is ruled it rules the back of the neck like the base of the back of the neck that seventh cervical vertebra vertebra right and um it also is responsible for the nervous system the central nervous system and what is gemini other than the nervous system and mercury um functions um, in the nervous system. It is the nervous system functioning. How do we have a relationship with our immediate environment, which is the third house? Well, our nervous system is how we sense and perceive, right? Sensory and perception is part of our nervous system. And Alcyon, you know, is the fixed star that represents this. And, you know, Taurus into Gemini, Taurus being the actual, the resonance of the, of the material world, right? Taurus is um, the medium of our growth, the living soil, the actual resources around us that we utilize and that we can connect with as a natural rhythm. Alcyon ruling this, you know, this is the throat chakra at the back, right? This is the, the back of the throat chakra coming out. This is the Schumann resonance, right? The Schumann resonance at seven to eight hertz is corresponding to the throat chakra, um, which is corresponding to Taurus. So we are starting to put these pieces together here that the the goddess of the grain and agriculture, that which gives us the nourishment to sustain us and to feed us, but also the cycles that are necessary as part of that process. You know, she is now in conjunction with Alcyon, with the Schumann resonance, with the resonance of the natural world that we express through us um, as a means to... Um, <sighs> to manifest, right? It is that transition from Taurus to Gemini. And so she's really sitting here, um, you know, activating this in um, 
down to the level of the planet herself. And so again, this is about plugging into the planet, um, the electrical and energetic grid of the planet through your um, practices, your energy modalities, whatever they are. So your meditation, your prayer, your Reiki practice, acupuncture, yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, all of these practices are cultivating energy and also allowing for you to get into um, the full chakra system, which is outside of your physical body too, and get into that earth star and connect directly to the planet because she's supporting this process right now of our own manifestation potential in real time. So Alcyon is really important. Uh, Ceres is really important as well. And they are, you know, Ceres and the, not Sirius the star, Ceres, Ceres with a C, C-E-R-E-S, the asteroid, um, the goddess Ceres, she and the north node of the moon, right, Rahu, they are coming closer together and they're going to meet in this Hyades starseed location. And the thing about the Hyades um, as a mythological construct, the Hyades are the half-sisters of the Pleiades. They all share one father, which is Atlas, you know, the Titan that holds up the world. And Alcyon is the main one, right? She is the main daughter of Al Atlas. She's like the main, the mother hen of all of them. But the, the, the Hyades in fixed star astrology and more like Hellenistic astrology um, and probably sidereal astrology too, right? Based on the constellations, they have... Uh, they are known to be very sorrowful, right? Because they had to watch their father hold up the world, you know, on his shoulders. And that was really hard on them. And they are very express, you know, when people have Hyades um, stars in their chart, you know, it really portends um, uh, storm surges and lots of rain and flooding. And we are seeing, we are seeing that all over the world, flooding all over the world, um, typhoons, tsunamis. There was a huge earthquake actually, I think it was last night in Alaska and there was a tsunami warning. So as the North Node is getting closer, is now technically in this territory, the Hyades star seeds and within the Hyades star cluster. And as Ceres gets closer to that and they meet, there is, I mean, the upsurge in um, expressiveness of, of any number of emotions is going to be um, very obvious. And it's going to be part of the way that we evolve because we can't get into the Pleiadian revival that comes with the shifting of the nodal axis to Taurus and Scorpio without going through the territory of the Hyades. And, you know, the Hyades star seeds, there's a lot more coming out now in my readings. And so it's always so well-timed because these individuals are holding this signature and for as sorrowful and expressive as they can be about the negative things, it's also able to um, express and experience joy as much as the sorrow, but it's the upswell of emotional energy that is represented by the Hyade star cluster and the Hyade star seeds are really able to hold this signature because they don't shut themselves off from the feeling of it. And if we want to truly evolve, we're going to have to allow ourselves to plug in directly to this upsurge and this swell of emotion that is either sorrowful or full of joy. It doesn't really matter necessarily, although the sorrow and the swelling of the oceans and the storm surge is much more connected to the Hyades star cluster than not. But the Hyades star seeds they have this purity about them. They come at these situations with this innocence and they will respond emotionally to whatever is put in front of them. And so they have, the Pleiadians are much more capable and comfortable um, in the being in a totally open heart chakra and being grounded and balanced in that. It's the Hyades star seeds that tend to have a little bit more just kind of like, um, overwhelm when it comes to their emotions when they experience um, the planet going through destruction, right? When other people are suffering, that is an upswell of emotion. And I feel like with Ceres representing Gaia as the actual planet herself um, is going to 
there, there's going to be a connection here, an upswell um, energetically and very likely more flooding, very likely more um, disruption, swelling and the storms surging for sure on an energetic and physical level. So that's something that we're going to keep talking about, because now that the Rahu specifically is in this territory, um, it's it's the Heidi starseed signature is going to become much more uh, relevant to our evolution. So my friends, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you are interested in a reading or energetic support through this process, of course, you can book through catalystenergies.net. That's in the description box below. Um, take very good care of yourself. Um, and, and like I said, hydration is important. Um, you want there to be, um, you know, there enough of a flow. If there is a surge, you want it to happen. You don't want to get, uh, you know, you don't want to be in a drought or a desert. That's kind of, you know, the other side of, you know, Leo energy, especially Mercury and the sun, and they're going to meet each other soon. Like you, without that water, and then you just dry out into a desert and there nothing can, you know, it's not the same at that point. So I hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for tuning in. I really do truly appreciate each and every one of you. And I will see you tomorrow for some astrology for the week. Take care of yourself.